I think the major breakthrough of this or benefit of this is that I can select whatever parent I want in the hierarchy uh -huh. and consolidate up to that level. So the translation, the currency translation will respect where am I in the tree based on what I select here. And so part of the joins and the way I pulled the logic of grabbing these consolidated rate tables yeah. is I'm looking at, wait, wh where are you trying to translate up to using, using that field? So that's, and that's something you can't get in saved search. And what's the difference between subordinate subsidy, subsidiary here and parent subsidiary? Ah, there? okay. This is if I want to limit the results to one subsidiary. So I want to see, let's say, I want to see this subsidiary's trial balance expressed in the parent uh -huh. subsidiary's currency. Got it. Translate up so I can have that filtering, which is another thing that clients sometimes want to see is if I just run the native trial balance and I, I can run a consolidated trial balance or a consolidated balance sheet, but the natively, it won't come with a filter. I just want to see this subsidiary's results. In what the are they expressed in the other parent currencies, parent uh, parent subsidiary's currency? Um, well, let me just select all of them because I don't know. You do, how... you do need to make a selection here because it, it brings in the scope. Okay, so pretty good, right? There's the book, subsidiary, right? Showing the different subsidiaries here, GL account. On that net debit or credit in the base currency and then in the consolidated currency, looks like right now the data in here, they're all probably USD. It looks like I don't have anything in this one, which is now it's a foreign sub. So it's hard to... Hard to show that part of it. Hard to show it, that, yeah, that it that it's going to be respecting that. How do you know if it foots to zero? You put a total in the, in the query render. Yeah. yeah. Let's stop here for a second. Mm -hmm. I think this is awesome. I can imagine the detail is more or less the general ledger listing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, great. Let's maybe start with this one, the trial balance one. These are query definitions? Yeah, these are in the query renderer. Uh -huh. Oops. Perfect, okay, great. Yeah, that's where they are. So what are we doing here? So a couple of the things we need to know is we need to know what fiscal year we're in. Yeah. The reason I need to do that is because retained earnings versus the <clears throat> actual GL account is going to have to respect what a, when I'm running the report, where yeah. is my, what fiscal year am I in? So I got to grab the, uh, make a little temporary table to create each accounting period, what fiscal year is it? Not so easy to get to because there isn't any field on the period record that says what fiscal year is this? There is a parent record which is going to be the quarter. And then the parent record of the quarter is going to be the fiscal year. So you got to kind of create a little temporary table that will get to it. We also, one of the one of the major things we need to do here is grab the, let's go into the joins to find it. We have to grab the consolidated exchange rates if we're trying to produce a trial balance that will be respecting a parent entity's currency translation. And those rates live in this table that is here consolidated yeah. exchange rates, right? That's that whole conversation about what are these different exchange rates. But yeah, totally. in any event, we're, we're coming from here and we also have to, depending on the translation rate type, yeah. which is a field on the account record, yeah. that's going to determine what rate we need to look up. Wow. So yeah. I'm pulling it in in two places. In one of them, I'm joining on the transaction period because those are going to be used for the rates that are average or historical, where it's dependent on the period it's that the transaction is actually in. Yep. And then I got to pull it in here, which is the balance sheet more, the things that are the current rate, where it needs to be the rates that are driven by the period that I'm reporting on, the ending period that I'm reporting on in the as of kind of date. We don't care what when the transaction occurred. We care what am I reporting on. So I got to pull it in twice and do the joins that way. And let's see what, what else is important here. Yeah, you got multi-book going. Yeah, and multi-book. So I've got to also put a filter in here for what book I'm looking at. And that's just a general thing I, I learned about running reports in, in SQL is that unlike saved searches, there's no default. So if I don't put a filter in for the book, You'll get I'm going to get results from, from all the books. That's just an important thing. So, yeah. uh, and I got to reference that book in all the places where it all appears right. because the, these tables also depend on the book. The translation is also book specific. So uh, let me just see, where is my condition for the book? Yep, I've got that. So the accounting book equals, it's one of our filter placeholders, yep. which is my placeholder for that. I try to use comments and just try to describe yeah, what I'm doing. Nice. Great. Coming back into the actual select, basically, I'm pulling in our, our net debit and credit, right? This one is pretty simple. That's just the base, that'll be the base currency, debit minus credit. Yep. And then to get the consolidated rates, it's really, this is commented out. I'm just kind of splitting it up, but this this one is the main one here. And basically what we're saying is when the, this is the rate field on the account 
on the account yeah. record, what rate yeah. type it's called yeah. generally. Right? You got to determine current, what kind of math you're doing. Yeah. So when, when the rate type is current rate, then yeah. I care about balance sheet period. And then at this table here that I pull in, I name it down there. CER1 is the consolidated rate table that's going to speak to my reporting period. It's going to respect the filters that I'm going to be using. And it's going to translate these accounts by the current rate of the period that I'm reporting in. And then if it's average, then I need to take the, if it's, sorry, if it's historical or average, then I need to look at the other table, which is joined on the transaction period, not the reporting period, because those rate types always respect the, the actual translation rate in the period of the transaction, even if I'm reporting, it won't care what period I'm reporting in. Each period's activity is translated at, at that period's rate. It's activity-based and it's, again, each period's activity at that period's rate. So I got to find what period did the transaction occur in and translate based on that. And that's basically what I'm doing. So I do it on the debit side, I do it on the credit side, and then that's my net consolidated debit plus or minus, right? So that gives me that. So, I mean, the output is pretty, pretty simple, right? I'm just getting what's the book name, yeah. what subsidiary am I in, what's the GL account, what fiscal year am I looking at, and then base currency, net debit or credit, consolidated currency, net debit or credit. And obviously we can expand on this and add more okay. fields and do whatever we want.